Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 18 of our Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, as always, I put a link in the top right hand corner so you can check that episode. Really good episode to uh, start a campaign out and learn sort of the ins and outs of the beginning. Um, okay, so another British reinforcement event, Loyalists are alarmed. Faced with the threat of a continental army invasion, British officials in Frontier issue a call for Loyalists to join their ranks. In response, a significant number of Loyalist volunteers and militia units rally to the British cause, bolstering the defenses of the area. If you recall from last episode, I think we had an event that added to 1,280, or we'll just call it two stacks totaling about 2,600 men come onto the battlefield last time. Now we have four of 840 coming on. So I guess the entire population of the frontier has become a British loyalist and is taking up arms, but we'll try to deal with that. Let's take a quick peek. Do we know where any of this is coming from? Not really, so I don't know if they just spawn in settlements or not. Uh, it doesn't look like it, so we'll have to keep an eye out for where that potentially might have come from. What I'm trying to do here is move... Ward's forces out to take Fort Herkimer, uh, as I, it's probably not how you pronounce it ever, but I just like saying it that way. Um, there are some loyalist forces incoming, oh man, there's a lot of guys incoming over to the fort. So let's go ahead and take this battle, there's <laughs> almost no artillery here, it's just a bunch of militia, so that's not really difficult at all. We'll, we'll move our forces forward, we only took, what, eight, uh, ten... 10 attrition losses, losses, losses moving into this fight, so that's a little bit better than we normally have, although according to that we've taken 11, so, uh, you know, who, who knows. But let's, uh, let's fight the battle of Fort Herkimer and let's get started. Okay, on the battlefield, as always, I pause right at the beginning, just give a bunch of orders out to my troops, and then we sort of let the battle go around, or go along. I do have to be careful for where the British reinforcements might come. I kind of think that they'll come from this direction over here. So on the map, uh, this tactical battle map that's technically uh, west. I don't know if that's actually the correct location. Let's have these guys try and skirmish with the British skirmishers. These are just militia, so they aren't as good. I would prefer if my... If my guards were not the ones taking cannon fire, they are not the ones I really want to be battered and bruised with, with that cannon fire. So let's, let's keep pushing on. So how do the British place their artillery? Because every time I place artillery in a fort, my artillery causes massive amounts of friendly fire in those, in those incidents, so... It's it's really interesting. I, I I really wish there was a way for cannons and regular troops to sort of um like combine together on forts so that you could have a proper a proper like artillery wall on a fort without it being a major problem for your troops. I see a bunch of British militia moving up. Our cannons are still moving up. Let's see. Let's move those guards up a little bit more. Move you guys over here. Keep pushing forward with all of these guys. It's, uh... I like that we didn't start right on top of the fort this time. Sometimes you start, like, right on top of the fort or in the corner. Now, there's a, a new update is coming out soon. I mean, you know, it's it's always soon when it comes to, when it comes to games. Nobody can define what soon is. That's always the, the funny funny quoting all of that but there is there is a patch coming out who knows they they said it went to the testers recently so hopefully sooner rather than later is the answer here uh i mean i don't know how i how i feel about how you guys are moving out but let's continue pushing forward with some men Let's continue pushing over here, and then let's have the skirmishers move up. Ward, you're probably needed over here, and then we'll move you guys out over here. Alright, you guys can press hold. 
And hopefully the artillery... Okay. You guys are not holding. It's alright. We don't need you to hold, I guess. Okay, second lieutenant, somebody somebody is wounded. One of our guys, he probably was the one that ran across. He took a lot of casualties. Archibald surrendered. That is a very, a very English sounding meme, Archibald. Okay, some of this is great for our canister, some of it is not. Oh man, our guys over here are getting a little battered. I wonder if they're taking canister fire. I haven't really been paying attention enough. Can we... Can we push up like so, and then you guys move around? Man, even more... Even more wounded soldiers. Okay, can you guys... You guys coming back? Yep. Perfect. Okay, Ward. You're over there. That is fine. More wounded officers. I was, I was talking, I don't know who I was talking to about this, but one thing that the Civil War game to me does a little bit better is I actually feel a connection to the officers in that game um, because you have an actual progression system of the officers where in this game when my officers die, I don't really, I don't feel like I, like, care. If, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody but me. But I just, like, when my units die in this game, I really don't care. And in the Civil War game, I feel like I care a lot when my units die. And I, I feel like that's just something that they could... I don't know how you would make it work in this game. I mean, caring is such a subjective thing, especially in, in games like this. But I feel like if you could somehow make it matter to where the player is like, oh yeah, I lost these guys. Or these guys were really battered in this battle. And, you know, that sucks. Okay. Uh, they they came back. Uh, then I, I think there would be a little bit more buy-in to... I, I don't really know what I'm saying. Hopefully you guys kind of understand what I'm trying to get at here. I'm not doing a good job of explaining it. That's... That's absolutely for sure. But uh, re really what I'm trying to get at here is that I, I just don't care when I lose my men. And it's kind of a shame. I wish I wish I cared more. And I, I think it's because there's just no no progression system that really makes sense in in terms of this game and how it's played. You you just kind of have your regiments, they replenish. Um the oh boy whoa 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 I'm talking like the battle is over and there's a whole whole bunch of redcoats coming over here uh, okay so that's uh that's reposition you guys get on the wall over here you guys move over here grab all the grab all of these guys you guys need to run down over here where where are the rest of my guys we need you guys I don't see the the marks going out like our, our guys are okay I don't really want you in front of the cannons so it's the let's pull you over to the side and then yeah that um I should have known it, that didn't seem like enough guys and I did say that the the enemy would probably be coming from that direction all right let's bring all of the all of the prisoners over here, somebody, uh, you know, point a gun at them and tell them that they are prisoners. And then hopefully, hopefully we get our men into position in time. You guys need to really badly get over here. You guys need to move over here. Uh, they're rear flanked, so that's unfortunate. Please, please start moving forward. We have the guards behind our cannons in case the British get really froggy and charge us. Those guys, those prisoners, need to come over here. We'll have those skirmishers just uh, continue harassing these guys. Yeah, you guys just continue harassing over there. I think we, 
I think we reformed our line just in time. Notice those guys barely, barely in time. I don't know if they're going to charge. We should get some canister rounds off. Looks like they are about to charge. Well, those guys decided that last canister round was a little bit too much for them, which I don't blame them whatsoever. Let's, uh, you know, place our nicely cooperating prisoners over there. We'll find a place in Portsmouth for them because that's where all of our prisoners seem to go. And uh, that was that actually became a little bit more interesting because of because of that. I'm not noticing when I click on the enemy that anything is happening, which is really weird. I've I've been mentioning this, and other people have mentioned this too. Uh, post New York, there just seem to be a lot of bugs with um, a lot of things in the game and I don't know like there's just there's no you, you can't really see anything I don't know if you guys notice that but when I am moving like there's no lines to show that my guys are moving out at the very beginning those lines were there but now now they are not and I'm not sure we're going to charge over there and then you guys are going to like so those prisoners are doing fine. We probably don't need the artillery to fire at anybody. Now I think about it, Artemis Ward. You go over there, and then... Um, how's this going? Those guys are retreating. And then nobody really knows what's going on over here. So you guys... I bar I like briefly saw blue lines. There we go, there's some blue lines. You guys need to fall back not get stuck in and overextend yourselves, you guys can finally start shooting after you move up a little bit more. Also noticed a lot of audio issues uh, after New York. So I, I think the devs, I mean, it's early access. I always like to mention that because nothing is going to be perfect. But I think the devs have quite a... They, they need to do a lot of troubleshooting on the bug reports. It's not just me. I've, I've heard from numerous other people that they've been having issues in the late game with weird things like the British moving out on the map and just standing there for five days. Um, just just a bunch of weird stuff that you can't really... It's, it's pretty hard to to notice and quantify until you're in the thick of battle and you're like, what is, what is wrong? It's like somebody with no eyebrows, right? <laughs> you like look at them for a while and you're like, what is wrong with you? Like, what? <laughs> and then finally you realize they don't have no they don't have any eyebrows that's a very i don't know why that came to mind but it just did where there, there's a lot of things where until you play a lot of these battles you're like there's something wrong with this battle and i can't tell what and this one is like the lines sometimes occur last episode you saw units that would um teleport in and out of existence like our, our cavalry would be right on top of them and they would literally disappear before your eyes and then reappear. Alright, hopefully those guys. We need cavalry on the frontier, but we only have so many so many cavalry. So much cavalry. Um that can't really do it all the time. But lots of prisoners in this battle, which is perfect. Can you guys I don't know, you probably won't make it. Let's uh pretend there's Benny Hill music playing in the background. And we're, we're charging them and trying to capture them. I wonder, could you... Would that cause a capture? No. There still seems to be something wrong with fleeing troops. Like, there's no casualties as they're fleeing. And then 16 casualties as they shoot off a volley. Uh, so, you know, uh, let's, let's just end because... It's whatever. Victory. Yay, we took 415 casualties. That's a little bit more than I expected. Although, I think it was on the right flank where a bunch of our guys broke early. Right, disruption of supply lines basically comes down to we gained more support, plus two loyalty in Newtown, and seven in Portsmouth. Um, which is cool. Alright, let's, uh, let's try and grab all of this stuff. So our next plan is to take, I think, Stamford. Uh, we might lose Newtown just because... I realize it's a really small... yeah. Okay, they got a lot of men at, over there. We are moving more guys over there to replenish our... to replenish our ranks. 
Um, and then you guys, I need you guys to capture this equipment when possible. And then I wouldn't mind a battle with Walsh. Is that equipment still there? Yeah, Ward is still trying to. Can you guys just attack them as opposed to going around this weird roundabout way? No, 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 grab the equipment from him. Go, 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 go. Don't let the British take the equipment. Okay, cool. So Stanford might be the next largest area to attack. I don't really know what to do about Newtown. I guess we, we can't even recruit properly over here. Um, you know, if we lose Newtown, I don't really care. No, 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 no. I, I realize I told you guys to attack. I need you to just go back to the fort and then grab these supplies, run back. I need to check on my fleet. I don't know what I've been doing with my fleet. Where is... Okay, they need to go destroy some red coats over... Was it here? Yep. And our, our fleet has just been grinding rep. Nothing, nothing too crazy. New town. What am I going to do about that? I feel like... I feel like I need you guys to go up to Albany. You guys, we could just recruit like a really crappy militia company, I think. Eh, I don't know if that's worth it. Yeah, th they'll retake it. It's whatever. We'll go, we'll go fight that battle again and take it back from them. That's not, not important at all, to be honest. And then over here, you guys need to disband. This is how I move troops across. So we, we lose a couple men, which is unfortunate. We really only get 520 guys back, and there's 589. But it's a great way of moving your manpower across the map. You take some attrition by the looks of it, but what are we doing here? Minus two intelligence cost sounds good. Five research speed also sounds good. Four unit XP. Not that unit XP seems to really matter to me that's that's where i was talking about like i don't really care about my units and it's a really weird weird conundrum where i just don't feel any attachment to my units because i don't i don't really see a noticeable noticeable difference in them so 513 recruits that should refill this army and then we could go retake a uh, new town i don't know if it's newton but <laughs> i it's spelt New Town. Okay, Walsh. I wonder... Stanford doesn't have anybody over there. I feel like... We could probably move out these guys. Oh, and we have too many troops over there, too. Ooh, Fur Trader's House. So we probably need to move... Oh, this is such a... It's becoming a weird, weird situation over here, to be honest. Can we, can we recruit in Albany or Bennington? Doesn't really have enough men. So it's basically just uh, uh, New Haven really is where we have our men. So this uh, Cotton Mason, that is a very, very strange name. Not going to lie. You are just going to recruit two troops and they're going to go sit in these towns, I think. Um, and then we'll probably put like a real militia over here let's see they don't have a lot of men and then they replenished so we could we could go sweep up this way fort sullivan has good um, what do you call it good loyalty we could move these guys from wyoming also up to fort sullivan more and then that way we don't really have to worry about this you guys can move out and then um let's move you forward a uh, really cool thing that we were talking about in the Discord, I mean, it was about attrition, and it led to a comment by Panda Kraut, and you always like when you hear um, something from Panda Kraut, because he's a little bit more official than anybody else on there. He's he's a contractor, he's not a dev, but he, he works more hand-in-hand -hand with the devs than anybody else. And we were talking about attrition, and some of the things he put forward for attrition would be absolute godsends for this game. One is like creating almost permanent brigades or being able to create brigades in towns or create brigades quicker. And then the other is that like attrition is a slower buildup, leveraging foreign sympathizers. 
Using their connections, network members reach out to foreign sympathizers who believe in the American cause. These sympathizers provide financial assistance, resources, and even ships to aid the Patriots Resource Network's efforts. Patriots' Resource Network's efforts. Is that proper English? I don't know. We, I always say localization is one of the very last things you do. Isn't Mir is hit? Like, I think he has glasses on, but they make him look really weird. Kind of looks like a robot there. But we appreciate money. Money is always good. We have to figure out how we're going to mop up this section of the map. I kind of think this army maybe... Oh, it's not moving out. This army could maybe... Oh, come on, move forward. Why do these guys move backwards and forward? Come on. Um, I think pathfinding on the map could be a little bit better. Uh, we always mention it's it's early access, so you always have to remember that in these games. But the, the army formation on the map sometimes leaves a lot to be desired. We've also lost a lot of men just marching through the frontier, getting out here. I would love for a battle to commence um, because we are taking fire does he have to be okay so those guys have to be like in the sphere of influence this will be a crushing defeat um this isn't difficult i just want to put that out there when like the british are just throwing zombie men at us that's not a difficulty factor it's definitely more of an annoyance and difficulty and i hope hope the devs can figure out a way how to create difficulty without creating annoyances um also on the discord uh, a while back was a talk of like tediousness of the game and i hope they realize that um the game needs to be fun I, we're only october 2nd of 1776 and i'm not going to lie the game is starting to feel like a slog so i i i have ideas of like how you could make the game better but i don't know how the devs like what their plan is to keep the game fresh because technically the war goes all the way to 83 i'd argue that 81 is sort of the end of real actions in the colonies uh really from 81 to 83 it's like there, there's nothing nothing in the scope of what happens between 75 and 81 after 81 but the war officially ends in 83 so i'm i'm curious how they're going to make a five six year campaign feel fresh for that entire thing or if the their concept is just like throw more men than ever existed in the world at you and that's the difficulty factor um i, I just want to clarify because i got this comment once of like somebody saying like i wish you would stop complaining i, I hope you understand that i'm just kind of trying to give like my perspective on an early access game on the things that i think are kind of like pitfalls versus things that i think need that like have potential to be really awesome or things where i'm like mm, I'm not really sure that's going in the right direction like i'm playing the game i enjoy it a lot but definitely october 2nd of 1776 this part of the game feels tedious as opposed to like incredibly enjoyable but anyways let's fight the battle of newtown again uh this will be an absolute <laughs> devastating battle okay forces moving out we're definitely losing uh, well now the blue lines show up Zoom out, blue lines go away, zoom in, blue lines show up. Not really sure what is up with that. I'm and I bring this stuff up because I do every once in a while send like timestamps or clips to say Panda Kraut or post timestamps or clips in the official Discord. So when I when I talk about this stuff, it's also so to like remind me to find these places in the video to send as like proof and evidence of something that the devs probably want to be aware of at least i i would think they would um and it's actually caused some things to be fixed in the past so um not to like toot my horn or anything but that that's also why i bring up these things is so that i can remember to timestamp them for for the they, they have like a feedback thread and a bug thread on their official discord and i i think those are things that the devs really you know they, they want to know about they don't they the devs can't fix things if they don't know about things that's that's the easiest way to word it and i'm pretty sure you know the devs would really like to know i like how dense the skirmishers are here i kind of wish that was how skirmishers were more often well these are regulars or uh 
like the regular skirmishers. I don't, I don't know what's the correct word for skirmishers that aren't Minutemen, but they're they're part of the regulars. I mean, they would just be light infantry, right? In in this time period, you would just call them light infantry or riflemen. I I don't know what exactly the correct terminology is for them, but I would think they would just be called light infantry. I could I could be very much wrong in that regard. I hope you guys can't hear the snowplow outside my window. Um, there has been an astronomical amount of snow lately where I live. We had like a foot and a half and it was really thick and heavy. It wasn't nice light fluffy snow. It was really really heavy and really wet so um, they have plowed my condo neighborhood like five times in the past three days and uh, unfortunately condo walls can sometimes be rather thin. I, I probably need to put some like sound dampening on on the walls to help out but I mean you guys don't really need to hear about my personal life but I, I do apologize if you can hear that. So the enemy's starting to rout. I would oh well the, the battle's over. Okay. So let's start, let's start trying to charge into the enemy and see if we can capture as many men as possible. I don't know if we will be able to, but, you know, might as well try while we can. And I need to turn the artillery off so they don't... Oh, too late. Okay, we didn't cause any friendly fire. Perfect. Wow, we lost condition already from the cavalry. I don't know, um, they've been messing around with cavalry condition. You regain your condition faster, but I feel like, I feel like cavalry condition might go down a bit too quick. I even, I buy the stamina upgrades for cavalry. I, I'm, I'm at a loss for that because I know that's something that they've really been trying to work on is like, you know, is this buff to condition too much? Is this nerf too much? And I feel like cavalry, they're they're good for one charge, which is probably fine, but they're already at zero condition. I feel like they should have been at 50% condition as opposed to zero. Also, really, really crazy that some of these units don't surrender easier or that they aren't taking any casualties. Um, I always find that little little difficult it's like okay you guys come on if i if i press pause they'll start firing at them maybe or not pause but space bar no you guys aren't going to shoot them you're blocked somehow okay and then i can't melee them um in civil war you could still engage in melee with no condition but they're i mean the vanilla game there wasn't much of a of a negative but in this game like the, I don't know, the cavalry, they, they lose condition too fast for me. They, they're really bad at chasing down routing units, and I don't, I don't think I like how that works. That's just at least me. Alright, we're going to speed things up. I'm going to cut the battle here while I chase all these guys down. Alright, unsuccessful. However, we were really successful at breeding during the battle. Negative 113 men, so... Lots of babies made during that battle. We caused 593 casualties, only captured 216, so not not where I would like it to be. I feel like my cav really failed me there, and uh, mostly because their condition was terrible. I, I really want cavalry to be able to decimate an army when they're routing, because in this time period, that's really what dragoons were best at, is riding down retreating units and forcing them to surrender. That's, uh, that to me is what, okay, and like right here, <laughs> the enemy just surrendered like crazy. Um, yeah, it, uh, I don't know. Interesting. Very interesting. Von, Von Steuben, he, okay, move speed of units seems so good. We're gonna do that. And then, um, even though we're standing right on top of it, we need, we can't grab that resource. We're just going to march directly into Condas Conda Sega. Okay, what happened here? We lost. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then we just need this army to move up. 
hopefully we grab those supplies before they run out and then we're just going to like continue marching forward so we don't have any men over there i made a small group yeah you guys you guys need to go to newtown because its loyalty sucks and then not all factories or shipyards i wish i could turn off the notification for shipyards i don't care at the moment i mean fifth rate six rates once we can build what is it heavy frigates i think is what we're we're learning it's the Razi's heavy frigates would be cool i don't know i've heard a lot of people say they really like the the heavy frigates they can man a lot of guns the Razi's have more structural integrity because once upon a time they were third rate and they get razied or like cut down into a third rate that's what a razi means uh so like the interesting thing is you can make them that's not really how it worked you you had a third rate and you didn't want it to be a third rate anymore for whatever reason i'm, I'm not a hundred percent behind the history maybe somebody a little bit more intelligent than me knows like the real logic behind the Razis, but as far as I understand, a Razi ship that's a fourth rate was once upon a time a third rate, and you like cut down the third rate and make it into into the Razi fourth rate. So it basically has like the hull integrity and the ability to hold major major guns, like the larger guns that a third rate would be able to hold. Whereas, um, like if you just built a fourth rate i mean they don't really build fourth rates but if you just like built a fourth rate it would be way different than a third rate turned into a fourth rate it's a long roundabout way of discussing that so this is this is a useless battle this fight it hopefully we can completely destroy them and we don't have any stragglers running around after it's actually a dark battle i think um it's later in the day but interesting i don't think i've ever fought a battle that's dark i hope the lighting is good i i youtubers always have a problem like that the concept of night battles is cool and all it's realistic yada 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 but in terms of showing them off to to people for for entertainment purposes dark battles are always tough because it's like you can't see okay this is they're already retreating can our cav actually get there our cav start so far back that that's probably why their condition is garbage yeah and they drain so much condition just walking across the battlefield i think that needs to be adjusted maybe moving on across the battlefield should be adjusted a little bit more i mean they're already down to 17 percent so that's a major drain you should lose condition moving across the battlefield but maybe it drains a little bit too fast. Anyways, uh, we're not going to catch these guys, so that's uh, that's that. We made more babies! 150, negative 150 men lost in that. So I don't know what is what it is about the uh, frontier, but uh, that it's baby making time. We are we are making men. Okay, let's see if we can catch these guys. Uh, doesn't look like we got them. Yeah, it's probably because we didn't catch any on the battlefield. That I've heard that is the difference. Rich Patriot from New Jersey needed donation to our army. He's really rich. Because 2000 back then, that is a lot of money. Holy moly. Um, it, it's so hard to like quantify money back in the day. Because it's just like, well, was that a lot? And it, the answer is like, yes, that was a lot. Okay, um, our guys, we need you to join an army. Going into this area is not exactly the greatest idea. And then we need more men. This is this is actually becoming an issue here, holding the frontier, is we need more of these like itty bitty units to hold all of this. It's something where I wish like loyalty was a little bit different because I don't really know how to hold all of these areas uh, with, with the loyalty issues that we're going to have. Oh, and are they moving? Really? What are What is that unit doing? Man, that's, a, that's annoying. I don't, I don't know what we're doing over here. And maybe, maybe Ward can, actually, can Ward go over there? We're, we're going to take Port Ontario 
and then let's see if we can we can get ward out over here because we just saw that they're British. Can you just go in a straight line for once? All right, uh, and then here's a uh, that's not a real battle, but we're going to take this Port Ontario battle. Well, at least um, oh, there's Wall. She's been wandering around like crazy. So like technically Walsh's condition should be terrible. I never you don't get any indicators of the enemy's condition or anything. And I feel like that's something they could add to the game. Because it like if you don't really know what's going on, you're like, wow, so the British don't have condition problems and we do. But they probably do, just the game doesn't tell you that. So I feel like that's something they could also implement into the game is maybe make it a little bit more clear when the enemy is having condition problems because uh it, it very much feels like oh the enemy can just march across the map and uh you know not not care about anything in the world that's uh let's move you guys out to this point i'm actually showing you guys how i how i kind of do this and uh, i don't normally do that because i think it's kind of a waste of time but i figured i could do that pretty quick on this one let's move these skirmishers out onto the flanks that's usually what i do is keep the skirmishers out on the flanks let's get our wonderful german general he is german right pretty sure he's german he has a german name but i mean that doesn't mean he's german because germany I say is he german germany didn't exist yet as a proper entity but hopefully you guys understand what i mean but when i say german like the region that is modern Germany. I mean, it, you know, you had Prussia. You, you technically had, like, a Germany, but it's, it's just, it wasn't a, a proper unified country at the time being. Like, you, you had the Bavarians and Württembergers and, um, who are the, who are the guys, the Death's Heads that wore, were all black? The, Starts with a B. Oh man, I used to have some miniatures of them and I want to make some in 15mm. I also play uh, miniature games. I don't know if you guys know that, but on my Discord every once in a while I'll post pictures of stuff I'm working on. Not all the time. I'm, I'm really bad at being active on Discord. I'm much more active on the what do you call it, the, the the official Discord for this game than I am in my own Discord, which is, you know, unfortunate, but sometimes that is how it goes. We'll put you guys on hold, and then let's grab all this cab. Hopefully their condition is terrible, but let's, uh, let's run them out on the side. We can hopefully take on a bunch of those guys. We've got some guys showing up on the flank. Another thing I hope, um, this has been talked about a lot, the, the gunfire in this game doesn't sound as good as the Civil War game. It, it kind of sounds a little like tingy. And that's probably a terrible way. I, I don't even know if that's a real word. <laughs> I, I probably just made that up. But, uh, that, that's to me how it sounds. Like, it's, it doesn't really sound like proper musket fire to me. But then again, I'm not an expert in that field, so that doesn't mean really anything. Okay, continue moving out here. We're taking more more uh, casualties than I would like with our cavalry, but I think that's fine. And then we'll move up. Get out of there. You guys shoot. Th okay, you guys are in melee. Okay, well, whatever. Let's, uh, let's push you guys forward, and then we're sort of wrapping around by the looks of it. And then we can... Hopefully... Hopefully get these guys. Yeah, the battle, it sounds quiet now. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but it just sounds... Feels like it sounds quiet. And it's kind of like bugging me. I'll, I'll see in post-editing if it also sounds quiet. Usually... I have to lower the volume of battles in post-editing because it, it's too loud, but in this it's it feels like it is too, too
too quiet. And I don't know if it's because I'm zoomed out. And then you zoom in and the volume's, volume's off. And I, I'm thinking because the frontier is a lot of hills. And in Civil War, like, they had hill. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing? I don't know what those guys thought they were doing. But they were... They were running all the way forward. I wonder if they thought that was a charge order. In the Civil War, you had hills, but it wasn't three-dimensional like it is in this game. You guys go... You you guys all go over there and see if you can distract them. Alright, there's the, there's the mass route. Let's see if we can charge. Another thing that's been talked about um, and brought up on the Discord is routing units can sometimes cause their surrendered allies to to unsurrender and in that case they didn't but we've seen it before on this in this game where it does and hopefully that's something we we just it wasn't known before and we brought it up and we thought it was known so hopefully now that it's known that that'll get worked on because I I find it silly like we surrender oh we're we're completely routing unsurrender and completely route with us and it's like uh no we'll say surrendered because you're just running off the battlefield that's my thought process behind it I could be a complete idiot when it comes to that but uh hopefully um this episode I, I'm looking at a time we're just about out of time of that 45 minute mark where I like to try to keep these episodes hanging around um obviously we can't always do that but that that's that's always my goal is 45 minutes and hopefully this episode was interesting that the views on this series absolutely collapsing and i understand it we're we're 18 episodes in views tend to like really peter off at 12 episodes so for those of you that are still watching um, just to let you know, like, I greatly appreciate any and all support you give. Um, I really, really appreciate that because, you know, when you have some videos that do really, really well and then something like a video or series starts tanking, you start to, like, really doubt your ability as a YouTuber and you're like, you know, you, you kind of have some, like, internal disappointment and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we won't go down that route. I don't want it to make it feel like I'm, I'm begging or anything, but, uh. Just saying, like, those of you that are still watching, so much appreciate, you know, every time you watch a video, or every time you hit like, or every time you comment, it really makes me feel better, and when I feel better, my troops feel better, and when my troops feel better, they create 85 more babies. So this frontier, we have created so many babies, I don't know what it is about the frontier, um, I, I don't know if it's just, like, more moist around here and that's like leads to babies but uh yeah this is such a funny bug to me but uh it's, it's early access guys you know i'm gonna say that forever little things like this aren't crippling to the game all right let's see if we can capture walsh maybe uh no he's going to get away all right we need port ontario and then i don't know where okay hansen there was somebody over here right I think, ah, uh, man, I don't, <laughs> okay, government sabotage, that's fine. It's not fine, but it, it happens. I need, I need a general, oh, okay, so there, okay, ah, gosh, yeah, this is, uh, proving very problematic for us. I think what I need to do, 502, and these places are not easy to, to man because they're so small a regular regiment can't fit in them so we need we need like all these itty bitty oh gosh you guys can't you guys need to go for Fort Sullivan and what we're going to do here is okay you need to capture those supplies and then we're we'll probably we'll go take like Newtown we might do that off camera because it's a little tedious so I, I think this is a good point to end the episode. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. Greatly appreciate all of you guys uh, for everything you do. Already had the little, r not rant, but a uh, li little speech about how much I uh, really appreciate all of you. And it's, um, I'm not joking when I say that. So thank, thank you so much for watching. Uh, 
go ahead and check out my Civil War series. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. It doesn't get as many views as this because it's an older game, but I it's made by the same guys and I really, really like that game. I actually like the style of the game a little bit more. It's a linear progression battles, more historical. Um, really feels like the Civil War. You just, you lose generals and commanders left and right and it really sucks. Like uh, Jeb Stewart died early and I was like, oh man, that really sucks. He won't screw up at Gettysburg anymore. Um, but you know, like every, every time you lose men, every time you lose a general in that game, you really, really feel it. And that's something that I would love in this game if they could figure out is like the emotional connection you have to your units where in this, I don't really feel that whatsoever. But that is it for today's episode. As always, guys, until next time.